the weather's getting ready to warm up, I know that a lot of us are itching to get outside again. We're super excited to break out that old gearbox that we might have packed up late last fall. What if you don't have any of that gear, but you just want to start somewhere? If you're that kind of person that just really wants to get outside, but you don't really know where to start, then this is the perfect video for you. In this video, I'm going to introduce you to everything that you need to know just to get out there and start backpacking. As you might have guessed, the first thing on our list is the gear that you need to get. Often this can be one of the most scary parts for new backpackers because you're going and looking at all the top sites and you see those huge price tags. Well, these top companies do have larger price tags and that is for a reason. It's going to keep down the weight in the ounces and it's going to increase the durability of the product. But that doesn't have to be the absolute thing that you go out and get. You don't have to get every single piece of your gear with the top name brand on it. A lot of times there are cheaper alternatives that work just as good when you're starting out. When you're starting out backpacking, you're not too worried about all the tiny little ounces that add up. The better and lighter gear is going to come with time and affordability. When you're starting out, just take a little bit of the extra weight to save a few bucks. Even if you are a complete beginner, I'm sure you've probably heard about the big three. When we're talking about backpacking, the big three means shelter, sleep system, and backpack. Now, if you're going to choose a certain area to allow yourself to spend more money on in this video, I would totally say it should be this one. The big three is the number one place to spend the most money on to get the best stuff. This stuff is going to make the biggest difference on how you view the success of that trip. Now, when you're on the market looking for the right shelter, you're keeping a few things in mind. You're looking for how durable the product is, how lightweight it is, uh, the size of the tent, and also the features that you might want. Some extra features that you might be looking for depending on where you're going and who you're going with could be like a double vestibule, like two doors on both sides of the tent, allowing for two people that are sleeping in the same tent to be able to get out of the tent in the middle of the night without disturbing the other person. Could also be some extra pockets on the side of the walls if you want to store a little bit of extra gear up off the floor or maybe a double walled tent for condensation, or even a trekking pole tent to take down a few extra ounces. Now the brand that I love to recommend for beginners, and I actually still use it myself, is the brand Kelty. They are based in Boulder, Colorado, and they, they do pretty good with keeping the weight down on a tent and still allowing you to have uh, durability. This tent is actually in a huge stuff sack because I put like everything that I own in a stuff sack. Now when you're going to Kelty's website or, or wherever you're going for any tent, you do want to keep an eye on the weight, although I said it's not your biggest problem when you're beginning, you do want to keep an eye on it. You don't want to be carrying around a 10 pound uh, tent. The tent that I have is about a four pound tent. It's pretty durable and it crunches down even more than this if you crank on the straps a little bit. Uh, that's, in, that's including the poles or whatever you're going to strap underneath it for the tent. And I know that's not like a professional weight or for an ultra lighter weight, like two pounds or maybe even under two pounds, but it's still pretty good weight for beginners. It's totally doable to pack around on the trail. You're looking at a price tag of maybe $100, which is amazing when you're looking at backpacking tents. Now when you're looking for the right sleep system, what this means is you're looking for the right sleeping bag and the right sleeping pad for you. It also means a pillow for me, which I'll show you in a second, because that makes a huge difference for me. But it's totally not something that you need when you're starting out. You can use a jacket or whatever and just ball it up under your head. Now the price tag for this stuff will actually really depend on the season that you're planning on going in. When you're starting out, I really recommend starting in summer. Because when you're starting in summer, you have a lot lower price tag for everything. You need less layers and you need a less R-rated value sleeping pad which I have a video on, and you also need like a lighter weight sleeping bag. Now the problem with going for cheaper bags, even sometimes like a summer bag, when it's cheap, a lot of times they won't care too much about how packable it is or how lightweight it is, so you can get a lot of bulky bags. Like for example, I know that REI has some pretty good bags that are synthetic that actually keep you warm in the winter like they're rated to, however they are really bulky and heavy. If you can afford something like the Kelty Cosmic Down sleeping bag, it's like rated to like 20 degrees and stuff like that, it's actually pretty good. It's like $150 and it's going to keep you super warm and it packs down to a reasonable size. Now what I have is totally a summer bag. Maybe late spring, but it's pretty much a guaranteed summer bag. Even in the south, you know, maybe you can get to like 60 degrees at night, and so you don't want to be freezing out there. So I've got this Lunar bag by Mountain Equipment. It's a company, Lunar One. Uh, the thing I like about it is because it's, you know, a lighter sleeping bag, keeps you warm, maybe 40 degrees, I think it's maybe 40 to 50 uh, comfort rated. It packs down a lot with the, uh, the bag that they give you. Once again, I use compression traps for everything. And you can just shove it in the bag here and you can compress it to, you know, as small as you want and it, it fits in your bag a lot easier. Now the pillow that I was telling you about is the Thermarest pillow. Uh, it's not an air pillow. I've never really cared for the air pillows too much. They just don't feel like a real pillow. And this one's nice because it compresses up into a little ball here. 
when you're packing it, but then when you get where you're going, you pull it out, and if this is like too loose for you, or you need it more firm than that, you have a little drawstring here at the back, you can just tug on, and it just kind of fluffs up a little bit more. So this thing is great, lifesaver, um, I, I love it. And I also put this in my uh, dry bag along with my bag. Now when it goes to a basic look at like the type of materials that sleeping bags are made out of, the basic thing is that down is gonna be lighter and more compactable, and it's gonna have a greater warmth to weight ratio. And when you're going for synthetic, it's gonna be heavier and less compressible for the amount of warmth that it provides you. If you're going to summer camping, or if you're going even like in just a warm spring wherever you live, it really doesn't matter how R-rated your bag is, which means how warm it keeps you if you're going to winter it totally matters but in the summer it doesn't matter too much i have right here i believe it's a brand alps mountaineering and it's like an r-rated bag of like one or two maybe i don't even know if the company says it on the product description but it's it's not anything fancy it's it's a little heavier than some bags but but it's not that bad and you know it kind of stays compact for you like i said if you're camping in the summer months which is when i recommend you start backpacking anyways because it's cheaper it really doesn't matter how r-rated your sleeping pad is or how warm your bag is as long as it's going to keep you you know warm it really doesn't matter too much because it's they're going to be warmer nights and stuff like that so now the last thing that's part of the big three is the backpack, which is an obvious thing you need if you're going backpacking. And it's also going to be one of those things where you look for good backpacks and you're going to see huge price tags. So when I started, I made the mistake, uh, or not really the mistake, but rather just the unnecessary purchase of buying one of the Cadillacs of all backpacks. What I have is the 65 liter, which is way bigger than I really need, especially for my my weekend trips because I'm a college student so I'm basically just camping on the weekends maybe some longer weekends and some breaks sometimes but really just three days is the most I camp so I don't really need 65 liters anyways I bought the 65 liter Baltoro um, L Gregory Bartoro L. It's an amazing backpack and it it's it carries any weight you want you can pack it as full as you want you can have like 40 pounds in this thing 30, 40, 50 pounds in this thing, and it's gonna distribute it among your shoulders and your hips perfectly. You won't even notice that the weight is there, really. Got a lot of pockets, which I love. It's got a lot of ways for you to organize it and keep your stuff in a place where you know where it's gonna be. But like I said, it was just a little unnecessary. For my shorter trips, I don't really need all that room. Something that I do want you to look for, though, is the fact that because you're starting out, you're gonna be having cheaper gear, which means you're gonna be having probably bulkier gear. So you might need a little bit more space than you will later on down the road when you have all the best gear that's going to be compacted into like this big that doesn't mean you need to buy maybe a 65 liter but you do need a little bit of a larger backpack so maybe find somewhere in between 55 or 45 whatever works for you that's the main point for backpacks if you can put on something super cheap that you found at walmart and it, it tugs in some weird places but you're fine then, then go for that because it's going to be obviously the cheapest option some other options are rei rei's brand of backpacks are going to run like 100 150 maybe 200 dollars which is on the cheap cheaper end of backpacks and they do pretty well with distributing the weight. Their straps are a little cheaper so they wear out a lot faster but just to get started maybe REI is something that you want to check out. Teton Sports is also kind of a brand that I've heard some good things about at least for their price tag you know for about a hundred bucks hundred fifty dollars you get a decent bag that's not super cheap but it's definitely not some Gregory pack either. A huge thing that I do recommend for you when you're looking for your backpack is that you actually go in person because when you go in person you ask them to measure you they're going to measure how long your back is from like the the base of this neck here all the way down to where the bottom of your spine is so they're going to find the right size backpack for you which makes a huge difference when you do pull on the straps it's going to conform to your back and just spread the weight like it's supposed to some people prefer backpacks that are more of just a large tube where you just shove everything inside because it saves on some weight i prefer backpacks that are a little more organized because i like to know where my stuff is at all times but it also does add a little bit more weight to the bag itself i think my bag on its own without anything in it weighs probably about four pounds or something like that so it is a little bit extra weight there in the beginning now that you've spent the biggest portion of your budget on the area that's going to impact your trip the most the big three making sure that it's the right quality and the right fit for you let's take a look at your food and your water 
So obviously you're gonna need a way to cook food when you're out on a trail. And you're gonna thank me because you're not just eating granola bars or maybe some dried cereal the whole time you're out there, but you actually need a way that you're gonna cook your food. This is most often done with a gas stove, which is what I'm gonna be specifically talking about in this video. Since you're gonna be carrying literally everything that you want to bring with you, I'm gonna talk about just planning on boiling water and using that boiling water to make your coffee or your food or whatever. Some people like to bring the jet boil, which allows you to cook different sorts of food and stuff. And I love the way it tastes obviously, but it's just not the most realistic when it comes to price for beginners and it's just a little bit of extra weight so I'm just gonna be talking about the basic way to boil water when you're on a trail personally I think that the pocket rocket is the way to go it's gonna be maybe a hundred maybe a little under a hundred for the pocket rocket kit which is gonna come with a little can here and it's going to come with a little pot I should say then it's also gonna come with the stove that you need um, to use on trail and I have a few lighters here um, What's this? This is what I used to use for uh, food spoons and stuff, and it's just totally unnecessary. It folds down to like small, but then it's also small and you can't get in the bag, so I'm not using that right on the next trip. I'm going to be using actually uh, this Ozark Trail cheap plastic stuff, 90 cents or whatever. It's a little bit longer this way. Yeah, you can use anything though. If you go like Wendy's, you can find like long spoons or other Sunday places. You can find like long spoons you can get into the bag with. Those are great too. Anyways, it's not about the silverware. So the Pocket Rocket kit, like I said, comes with a little thing so you can hold onto your pot and not get burned. Uh, comes with another plastic piece you can use to measure out stuff maybe use as a second container you definitely won't cook on that obviously and then this is a uh, flint and steel it comes with this little pocket rocket thing it's super lightweight folds down to nothing and it boils water i think they say it boils water about a, a liter of water in three and a half minutes which you're never boiling really a liter of water but i found that it boils like one of this size of water in like just a minute or so which is definitely all that you need um msr pocket rocket this is the mini two i believe so yeah, I, I think the Pocket Rocket's great. You can find other versions on like Amazon, like China versions and stuff for maybe $30, $40. Those are great too. They might be a little bit heavier. They're definitely not gonna last as long. And whereas this thing will last you years and, and years on a trail. Also something that is kind of obvious to me, but I, I think that I should just at least mention it, is don't forget to bring the type of gas that your stove uses. I think mine's like isobutane or something like that. So make sure you find the right gas that your stove uses and make sure to bring it along with you, obviously, and make sure you have enough for however much you expect you'll be cooking. Now, when it comes to finding the right cooking pot for you, it's really not hard to find something cheap on Amazon to use. However, sometimes it could be made out of a material that's totally not efficient and weight, how well it works with heat and stuff like that. So, you know, if you if you, what you have works for you, go ahead and just use that. But what I use is the Toke 650 milliliter pot. It's great. It's titanium and it, you never know what you're going to find when you open up one of these things because I try to save space so I put everything together. Anyways, uh, that the Toke's material, the Toke's pot is this little thing right here. It comes with a little handle for you so that way you don't get burned if you're using it like uh, for coffee. It weighs nothing. I mean, I think it weighs like three ounces, something like that. And this is like another ounce. It, I like this thing. It kind of just helps you hold it together. Like, like you saw, I was able to put this in there and the lid didn't really fit on correctly, but you can still cinch this down and then hold everything together. So yeah, that's what I, I use for the pot. I use the Tokes. And I know there's a lot of other options like there's Stanley, which you can get on Amazon or somewhere else. Stanley is pretty good. They're going to typically be a little heavier than Tokes. They're reliable and durable, so that's also an option. A big thing though that I would urge you to do is use one pot for everything. Like you saw two here. I think that's because I was packing for my girlfriend last trip. I don't think I used two, hopefully. Anyways, but what I would say is, you know, try to, try to stick with one, you know, use this pot for everything. Use it for boiling the, the water for your food and then also use it to drink your coffee or, or whatever. Just small decisions like that is what's going to slowly cut down on the ounces on your trail. When it comes to the actual backpacking food that you bring, this is really where you can choose how much you want to spend or how little you want to spend. There's some huge, great brands that have amazing tasting, dehydrated food, weighs nothing, and there's like all sorts of flavor options, but they can cost like 13 a meal. Or you can find maybe some Mountain House meals from Walmart, which cost like, I think seven to 10 or $11. Or you could just go to Walmart and get like a pack of ramen for like 90 cents or whatever it sells for now, which also works. The main thing that you're looking for is lightweight and dry. So that way 
you can use the water that you're boiling with your stove I just showed you to heat up and soften the food you're about to eat. I really recommend not being the person that brings cans or whatever on the backpacking trip because those are also just unnecessarily heavy unless you just absolutely are dying to have cans with you. So here's my actual food bag. I found it just somewhere on Amazon. Cheap, lightweight bag. It has a way to clip it together and then it has a little thing for the carabiner so that way you can hook it to like a bear line and string it up in a tree. What I actually bring, this isn't everything I'm bringing on this next trip, this is just kind of where I store it all to, is the trail mix is always a good option, uh, keeping a hip belt or something like that. Um, there's hot chocolate if you want to have hot chocolate out there because that's dry and super easy just to heat up with water. I've got some really sketchy looking ramen. It's not the typical brand you see, so we'll see how that tastes. I also have a Mountain House meal. Mountain House uh, beef stew. Don't know how this one tastes really. I haven't tried Mountain House beef stew version. I have tried the chicken and dumplings. That's actually pretty good. The eggs by Mountain House meals are a little strange, but uh, we'll see how the beef stew tastes. So yeah, you know, you're really just looking for anything uh, dry. Um, you know, you've got oatmeal, cinnamon, uh, maple oatmeal by Quaker or generic brands. Um, and, and for my coffee, what I'll do is I will bring um, sugar <laughs> in a little baggie here, however much I think I'll be using. And I will be, I'll bring like coffee grounds, however much I think I'll be using. And these are probably really old, so I probably should change them out, but I bring coffee grounds. It actually is really nice. It makes your whole bag smell coffee. Then I bring these little creamers. They can bust, be warmed, but I bring these creamers because I don't like powdered creamer, so I'll take the extra ounce that this adds. So yeah, I think that's uh, basically it. Cliff bars are amazing. They are great to bring along trail. Also as a snack, you can eat along the way and stuff like that. Now, as I said before, if you are going into like bear country or somewhere that is known to have bears or they could possibly even be a problem or maybe even for like smaller rodents and stuff like that that are crawling around at night, you'll want to bring a bear line. And I was looking for mine earlier, but I could not find it. So, you know, you just go onto Amazon, you look up a bear line. Basically, it's going to have maybe a little sock looking thing for you uh, with a hole through it with a carabiner that it's attaches to a line or something like that. So you can put some rocks in that sock and hook the line to it and throw it up over a branch and it'll come back down the other end and then you tie like a little slip knot and you can hoist your bag through the loops I showed you earlier up into the air away from the trunk and away from your camp to not let the bears get at it in the middle of the night. When it comes to water and backpacking, you want to do like two things simultaneously. You want to make sure that you're not bringing too much because water can add a whole lot of weight real fast and it's kind of awkward because it like shifts back and forth as you're walking. But you also want to make sure that you're bringing enough to not die. So it really depends on the area that you're hiking in for how much water you bring. If you're hiking in the desert, it's recommended that you bring a gallon to a half gallon per person per day that you're going to be gone. And then if you're hiking like in the mountains where there's a lot of streams everywhere, you really don't need to bring too much. What I'll bring is I'll bring um, a life water water bottle uh, full because it's lightweight and it holds a whole lot of water and then I'll also bring this this grail water bottle full of water and then as you're walking along basically every stream that I see I'm going to be stopping at and I'm going to be filtering water. This grail water bottle is great it's about $80 you do not need this by any means when you're starting out. Um, I grabbed it when I was starting out because I thought it was really cool and I definitely don't regret it. Basically what it allows you to do is you have this area and this compartment and you are going to scoop up dirty water in this compartment and then you're going to uh, vent it with the cap being open and you're going to squeeze it down here. It should take about 10 seconds, something like that. Um, you're going to squeeze it all the way down and once you're all the way down to the bottom here, of course there's no water in it right now but you know you get the idea. Um, it's good. Uh, you can drink straight from this spigot because everything's being contained in that center one. And the filter is actually really amazing. Like a lot of filters that we have actually only do like bacteria and stuff that we have like in North America. But then if you go internationally, they won't filter out the viruses that might be in international waters. Whereas Grail actually filters out viruses too. So you can take this internationally and take water from the sinks or whatever and filter it and then drink it straight from here. So that's what I'll do. So if I'm going into the mountains with a lot of streams, I'm gonna have this and this full. And periodically, whenever I see streams, I'm gonna be actually filtering more, maybe filling this one back up. Now, Sawyer makes some really good uh, water filters too. They have like the Sawyer Mini, which is like $30, or um, there's a larger Sawyer, like Gravity Fed line, which is a little more expensive. But basically, those are great options for you as well, if you don't wanna spend the $80 on the gray out. But the bottom line is you need to have a water filtration system because you don't want to have to carry all of the water in the world with you because it's gonna add a whole lot of weight.
Now the next area to talk about is clothing. Clothing really isn't the area that you're going to be super focused on in the very beginning uh, because you're not going to be camping in Alaska during the winter when you're first starting. So clothing is by no means an area for you to spend hundreds and hundreds of dollars on when you're just trying to get started. But the basic idea for clothing is you want to bring synthetic materials. Synthetic materials are going to dry easier whether that's sweat or you just got wet and it's rhymed. And, you know, so aim for the synthetic materials because they're going to dry faster and they're typically very lightweight. You want to bring layers for warmth. So whether that means a synthetic t-shirt um, with a synthetic long sleeve shirt with a synthetic jacket. I mean, maybe a hoodie if you don't have something like that. But these layers are what's going to provide warmth for a cheaper price um, than going out and buying a $400 parka. So merino wool is also just a, a really good material that I would say you should just keep an eye out for. It's super warm and lightweight and it dries pretty quickly. Obviously, if it looks like there's going to be rain while you're on this trip, then I would say you need to bring some sort of rain jacket or a rain suit. I use the Ozark Trail rain suit. Um, it's a little bulky right now, but if I get a you know, compression sack, it squeezes down to a decent uh, size. And it's cheap, super terrible, super ugly, but it's going to keep you dry if it starts raining. So, you know, maybe just plan around that. Don't go when it's supposed to be raining all weekend if you don't want to spend money on a more expensive rain jacket in the very beginning. But it's totally easy to go buy a $20 rain suit from Walmart if you do expect some rain. Also, if you want a more detailed video on how not to be miserable if it starts raining on a trip, I would recommend that you check out the video up here. Um, it's going to go over the basics on how to avoid rain and then also what to do if you do expect rain along your trip. When it comes to shoes, people are going to have huge preferences once again, and that's going to matter on how expensive it is versus how lightweight it is. When I started, I got Merrill hiking boots, which are great because they're super sturdy and super durable, and I could like have a tree land on my foot and I would not even feel it. However, the downside is they're very bulky and very heavy. So, you know, choose what you want to choose. Some people prefer trail runners, which are basically tennis shoes with better traction. If you don't have expensive trail runners, or you simply just don't want to go buy some, or you don't want to buy expensive hiking boots, then you can always just use old tennis shoes as long as they have decent traction and decent support still. Also, just because when you walk in the store first, you see these huge hiking boots that are super heavy duty from Merrill doesn't mean that's the only hiking boots that are offered. There are actually lighter weight versions of hiking boots that will still offer like the durability that you feel with the boots typically, but also take down half the weight. Pretty much the last thing that I have to say about the gear you should be gathering is the light source that you're using. When it gets dark at night, you obviously want a way to see both inside the tent and outside the tent. If you bring a little handheld flashlight, I guess you could use that outside and hang it up inside and that would work for you. However, if you are looking for a little bit more of an upgrade from a little handheld flashlight swinging around up top, what I use in my tent is the Black Diamond No GR Plus Lantern. It's great. It has a lot of colors, which you don't really use too much, but it has the mainstream light, which you can actually hold and then like dim it down to whatever brightness you want and, and then all the way off. So that, that's amazing for the tent. It has these little clips up top. You just kind of pull up and then you hang it from the top there. And I love this thing. It's super lightweight and the battery lasts for like forever. It's rechargeable. And I think this thing ran for about $40 or something like that. So if you would like, check it out. It's the Black Diamond Moji R Plus Lantern. Now the headlamp that I choose to use is also a Black Diamond product. It is the Black Diamond Cosmo 350 headlamp. It is not rechargeable. For about 20 bucks, I think you can get the Black Diamond version that is rechargeable and is a little bit brighter. But this does everything that I need it to. It doesn't use too much batteries, so you can survive with a couple AAA batteries. I bring some extra ones just in case. But basically, it's also dimmable, so you know, you have the brightest feature and then you can like dim it down to whatever you want to. Yeah, so this, this is great. When it comes to how you actually pack your bag, it's gonna basically depend on the person and the pack once again. Like I said earlier, there are some packs that are basically just a large tube where you just take everything and you cram it down at the bottom of it and then roll it up to close it. And then there's some packs that are like mine where there's a lot of pockets and storage compartments. If you have a backpack like mine and actually a lot of the others too, the main idea is this. You wanna put the tent and like the sleeping bag in the bottom of the bag. And once you have that on the bottom of the bag, then whatever the next part is, is gonna be usually the heaviest stuff you have. You're gonna try to put that as far to the bottom of the bag and as close to your back as possible. This is going to allow it to feel more comfortable when it's on your shoulders. And then after that, it's really up to you kind of just putting things where you feel like you're going to remember them. What I do is I have a lot of my ditties up in the top here, the smaller stuff like toothpaste and um, my pump and stuff like that is all up in the top up here. And then I've got my first aid kit in this pocket and I've got like my fair line in this pocket. Just at that point, it's kind of up to you for where you're going to remember where your stuff is.
A great way for you guys to navigate if you don't know uh, how to navigate the area that you're in is actually called Onyx Backcountry. It's the app that I use. It'll have a topography map. It shows you the elevation of all the areas you're going. You can put little way marks on it for where you're going to camp, and it's going to show you with colors exactly how hard the trail is in certain sections, maybe some water locations. You can also look up like popular trails around you. Yeah, maybe in the future I'll have a full detailed video on how to use the app, but for now, I would just recommend checking it out. Onyx Backcountry. It's just a small subscription fee, and it's literally a lifesaver. Another tip that I have for you guys, especially when you're starting out, is actually getting yourself a hiking partner. This is going to make it more enjoyable, it's going to give you somebody to talk to, and actually add a level of safety as there's two people in case somebody gets hurt along the way. And my hiking partner actually is here with me. She does a lot of the shots that I do. This is Paige. So, yeah, she does a lot of the shots for me. So it's just a good tip for you guys to go find yourself a hiking partner, somebody that enjoys doing it with you because it's just going to make the trip like 10 times more enjoyable. When it comes to trying to find a spot that you actually want to camp in, there's a few things that you want to consider. The first thing is you want to make sure that you're not super low if it's going to rain or if it's going to be cold. So if it's going to rain, obviously wherever the lowest point is is where the most water is going to run. And so if you're camped beside a river, that's totally fine and actually really pretty as long as it's not going to rain a lot. And then also for the cold, a lot of times the colder air is also going to settle down. So in the middle of the night, wherever it's going to be cold, this is wherever it's going to be lowest. So just keep that in mind. If it's super warm and there's no chance of rain, it's okay if you want to camp like in a valley or something like that. But if it's, you know, if it's going to be kind of colder and you kind of want to try to stay warm or you're at the lower limit of your sleeping bag, then you want to make sure that you're going to be camping up top where it's not going to get cold or where the water is going to run below you. Another thing that you're looking for when you're looking for the right place to camp is actually how flat the area is. So the most annoying thing in the world is when you don't realize that you put your camp actually on an incline and you realize that you're rolling around in the middle of the night. So look for a good flat spot. Look for no dangers, obviously, right around you. Make sure there's no big limbs above you because if it could fall during the middle of the night, you just want to be aware of all of that. When it comes to actually cleaning up after your camp, the main thing that you want to remember and the most important thing is to always clean up everything that you brought in. If you bring it in, you also want to pack it up. That's trash or anything else you might have brought in. Just make sure you clean up and make sure that people might not be able to tell that you were there in the first place. That allows other backpackers to enjoy the area too when they come in. The number one thing about backpacking for me that I love is it feels like nobody's ever been where you are right now. So just do your part and clean up, put out your fire, make sure it's buried, and allow other backpackers to also enjoy the same trip. All right, guys, so that concludes the video. That's basically everything you need to know just to get started, the gear you need to get, kind of how to navigate, and just what to look for when you're trying to just get started backpacking. I just encourage you all just to get whatever you need just to get out there and try it, specifically in the summer months when it's less expensive for the gear. But yeah, I just, I hope that you guys will get out there and give backpacking a try. So, see you next time.